This is the Blockade Pimple Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, is Jared Morgan. Hi there, everybody. It's been a while. <laughs> remember us? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you might remember us from about two months ago. It feels like two months ago. It, oh, it yeah. does, doesn't it? Um, yeah. To, to say the least, uh, you know, it's the busy season. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's busy, all right. Yeah, especially for, for myself, my schedule suddenly uh, just got like all over the map and uh, made it impossible to do some recordings. So this is literally the first opportunity that Jared and my schedule have uh, lined up. Lined up, yeah, I know. It's it's been uh, yeah, it's busy chaos. The last, why is it that always at the last quarter of a year? They just, everyone goes, oh yeah, things. We need to do them all now. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> it's, I don't know why it happens, but it's a Christmas period, eh? It's just, yeah. it just gets crazy. Um, We have an absolute ton of stuff to talk about. But before yeah. we talk about that. A mountain. <laughs> yeah, uh, something that I'd been meaning to talk about uh, if we had lined up and then uh, it was kind of interesting and Jared was like, why are you doing this? So I started... um re-listening to our earliest podcasts that are available uh, to me on Spotify. Um, basically, we're talking about like episode 10 or 12, I think was the first one that's posted. Those are the f ones that we have episodes for. The other ones are lost lost mm. to the eons. Um, probably for the best. <laughs> really. Well, they're not completely but... lost because I know that um, I have been sent links to them existing elsewhere. <laughs> And I have yes. listened to the very first episodes and going, oh, well, I'm glad those are those are lost. Um, yes, but indeed. it was <laughs> it's been kind of fascinating listening to some of them. And I'm not listening to all of them. I just kind of am doing highlights. Um, but in those early conversations, it cracks me up. Jared was exclusively on Android, mm. and yep. was way in the weeds on his tech talk. <laughs> I was deep in the Android land. Like I, I obsessed about Android tech back then. I was running custom ROMs and really trying to push the Android platform as a gaming platform, as a consumer gaming platform, so hard with all the digital pinball games we were playing on it. It was yeah. ridiculous. And then, and then the other thing was, and I think this was a byproduct of what we were using uh, to do our recordings, and the fact that we didn't have video while we were doing the recordings. But, my God, did I just step all over Jared's voice. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was constantly stomped. And you, the reason, we, it's not because um, Chris is a bad egg. It's just because uh, it's the delay. The delay in the round trip of the audio was so bad that, and I think the recording tech we were using, like microphones and speakers and stuff, it would just clobber my audio, so you couldn't even hear me talk. If if like it wasn't like cross channel, well, like we have now. If I recall, also, uh, it would auto fade a voice in favor of what it thought was the main voice. Yeah, and so it was a Google Hangouts. <laughs> yeah, in the very early days of remember Google Hangouts. It's now Google Meet, but oh, okay. yeah, Google Hangouts was a thing like back there, and it was like really. Uh, um, yeah, really <laughs> primitive in to, compared to what we have today, I think. Well, when I stopped feeling bad about it was we were, uh, I started listening to just our interviews and mm. uh, was listening to the interview that we had with uh, Bobby Bobom. Oh, yeah. And she also was stepping over to Jared. So then I was like, well, oh, maybe it's not just me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Always, always the, the last to be heard down here in Australia. But whatever. We, yeah. we made it through. And uh, yeah, it is an interesting. Um, it's interesting to see how the show has evolved from those early, early days to what it is now. It is, but on the same hand, what's interesting is a lot of uh, what we talked about and what we theorized about uh, still holds water today. Um, mm. Our interviews. This is why I was listening to the interviews. Our interviews with the Farsight team, in particular, are quite interesting. Um, in terms of what <laughs> things that they were planning 
things that never came to fruition, things that we knew would never come to fruition as soon as they uttered it out of their mouths. Because then we also would do, we still do this to an extent, um, we'd have an interview, and then the very next episode was us breaking down the interview. Our reactions. <laughs> yeah. yeah, our reactions. Um, yeah, that's our favorite our favorite thing to do after an interview. And, uh, and there was one interview where afterwards we were just like mocking it. <laughs> just because was going, no chance well I, nah. and I don't remember so apparently a a farsight employee who only lasted a few days after his post had posted some stuff that was i guess skating and unfortunately mm-hmm. we decided to take the high road and not talk about what was there <laughs> which now unfortunately has like, what was being talked about <laughs> um yes and yeah. And then we had Mike Lindsay come on and answer. Well, when I say come on, not on the show, but uh, into the forums and answer a lot of the questions that people had. And mm. the overarching answer for everything was, yes, we would like to. <laughs> That's in our plans. And we just <laughs> started mocking that. Um, and there's nothing yep. better than hearing, uh, if you guys remember Bonzo, he was our uh, German friend that was on the show a lot. Hearing him mock it was just an extra touch of a... Extra. It, yes. Yeah, that was amazing. Um, yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to uh, to let everybody know that, yeah, those episodes are still out there. Um, they're worth a listen. I'm, I'm still kind of filtering through some of them and... Uh, uh, I'm I'm dying to get to the Farsight loses the <laughs> Williams license. I episode. remember that interview. That was a rough one to do. Yeah, with Mike, we had to be really careful about how we frame that one. Yeah, um, but if you're one of those that has just discovered us and is looking to go back, start with the interviews. Watch those. Yeah, or listen to those. Um, I think those hold the. Uh, the best re-listen because my god we were trying different formats we were on a weekly only going a half an hour uh we had different themes for all four weeks and you can see how quickly well, yeah. that all falls apart so yeah it's amusing yeah that became pretty hard to maintain yeah. <laughs> but uh, the the thing with you won't you won't find any references to these episodes on the website because they're just too far back in time yeah um and our show works as you if you're new to us our show works more like a um, a news show, really. Um, so having archived episodes on the site that far back really doesn't serve, serve the audience well. So you'll have to go back through your favorite podcasting app and just do a search. Normally we had interview in the title of each one. Yes. Um, and some of those interviews are actually up on, some of the more recent interviews are more are up identified on the um, blackapinball.com site. But those really early ones aren't. So you'll have to go and just do a bit of hunting. Yeah, for a while also, uh, for a long while, we were just being cheeky with the show titles and they literally tell you nothing about what the episode They, they were meaningless. Yeah, we should, <laughs> as you can see, we've changed that now. So yeah. it's actually helpful for us to actually work out when stuff was done. We weren't know. the quickest learners. Um, no, we weren't. All right, hey, let, why, don't we, uh, why don't we dive right in and talk about some stuff. Uh, let's go older news first and... Yeah filter up from there. So uh, let's talk at Games 4K cabinet because mm-hmm. after the pinball show where they had a bunch of these cabinets on display and people actually got to take a look at them, uh, only a handful of people apparently got to play them because they weren't optimized yet. Um but after getting some feedback and everything, there was a kind of a consensus of really the coin door is offset and uh, what your topper doesn't light up. Well, that's kind of lame. And then those that had some on hands experience said that the uh, Adams family table was not optimized yet. Uh, mm. While the other call it the, uh, all the tables that were, had been previously available for ad games. Those were running just fine. Um, yeah. But uh, since then, there's been some changes to the old Adams family. And that comes in the shape of, let me uh, get into this here. There we go. So. Oh, look at that. Um, they added some things. A, they got rid of the, 
the, the Act Games logo. The Act Games logo at the top. Replace it with the Adams Family. Now, truth be told, I'm not exactly loving it because it seems like a lot of graphics. Yeah. Uh, mixing with the back glass graphics. Uh, I would have just actually preferred if it was just the name Adams Family on a black or you know background, but it's better than would, the 4K with the pinball there. across the top. Yeah. That's definitely true. But yeah, like having a little marquee logo up the top there would have been quite nice, just on black. Um, yeah. Um, they also added graphics to the speaker grills. Um, okay. And then... Uh, ooh, look at that. Oh, actually. okay. So so that's the uh, the back the mm -hmm. back plate mm -hmm. for the uh, connections. That's that's nice to what we've been asking for that. a while. That's very nice. Yeah. Uh, and then, like I said, the coin door is now centered with the uh, maker's plate in the middle there, which is a, just a much better placement for that. Looks so much better. Yeah. Good um, Good call on them doing that. And like, then, that great. Uh, how come it doesn't show me the top? Oh, there it is. Whoop, there it is. Uh, the topper is now lit. Nice. So they got. See, some... that's a bit more premium, right? Yeah. That's, that's, that's a little bit more shinier. Turns out that now. I caught this on somebody's YouTube. They were saying that that Foxconn, I believe, is the one making the machine. Okay. Foxconn would be the processor, I think. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, they were the one... They kept on mentioning them, but the builders in general, I guess, had already been having discussions with... Um, with App Games and centering up this stuff wasn't going to uh, set production back at all. And adding in these oh. little quality of life wasn't going to set production back at all. And so that's why they went ahead and went, yay, let's do that. Do it. Um, the only thing now that I wish, that plunger. I'm not a fan of the plunger. It just still you, looks like would you toy. prefer just would you prefer like a more traditional looking plunger tip Absolutely. on it? A plunger end, yeah. 100%. Just, just like, a round, like a round ball one or just a black Handle black with like, a spring on the outside. I don't know. Just mm, that recoil looking. I just want a traditional plunger. That's all. It's what yeah. What Arcade One Up did on theirs was all you needed. Um, and they're readily available as well. So like, I will be can... curious to know if that's moddable. <laughs> if it's just a hole sensor, you could probably put whatever hole sensor you want in there if you really want to. Mm -hmm. It's just whether the mount will handle the. Um, you might have to like route out the cabinet or something if you want to put it in. But well, it's. I mean, it's a bespoke mechanism that's in there for the guidings. But I mean, on the exterior, if I can just change out the pull, the look of the. Oh, pull, like just just put a yeah, like just a, swap a, the a, handle. Yeah, you know, go. Mm. <laughs> WizardofMemons.com. Um, <laughs> I heard a lot of that in yeah. our podcast for when we were getting advertised with them. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Ooh, we did plug them a fair bit. Yes. Just wondering if one of his pull knobs would just fit right over the top of that. Um, or if Be it worth even unscrews. Checking. Yeah. If anyone has like one of the older 4Ks, if they can actually unscrew the the, the actual knob end of it, that will be really interesting to yeah. explore. Um, other things that got announced with At Games, though, was... Hey, look at that. They're making a Snoopy cabinet. It's like, uh, what? <laughs> right? That's, well, so this like... falls into the the collector's edition cabinets mm. that were mentioned. So this is uh, the first one that's going to be coming from Zen. Um, I, I like the look of this cabinet, but it's a lot of yellow. It, look, it is a lot of yellow, um, but... It is definitely of the theme. And I like how they've actually... See, this is a really good example of a... It's it's still got graphics around the the back box, but it's sort of they a little bit less... with the back box. Yeah. They're, they're actually quite starkly different and yeah. really on brand as well for Peanuts. Yeah. So um, this is like fine for me. And then the one that threw us for a loop... <laughs> Mm. Um, hold on, I gotta bring it up. Dun, 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 dun. Dinosaur Dynasty. <laughs> yeah, this is well. That one is one of the um the Magic Pixel tables. Magic right? Pixel table. Yes. 
Um, that was completely unexpected and made me go, wait a second. Are well, these... then what isn't possible then? <laughs> no, like, like, what is possible? What are these, these 15... You know? I thought the 15 tables were only going to be Zen, and then there's this other skin on it. Um, have confirmation from Mel. Yes, there will be 15 different Zen skewed collector's edition machines. And they are they are named collector's edition. So yes. if you are looking for those when you're buying, that's what you'll be looking for. Correct. This is a standard edition for KP. Right. So, yeah. Um, so I would expect, therefore, we're going to see a, a bunch of different um, at games version cabs coming as well as uh, Zen version cabs. Um, I honestly would not be surprised in the least if we see a Dr. Seuss themed um, cab yep. and uh, probably a Taito cab, like a, their Space oh, yeah. Invaders. I would not surprise me in the least um, to see any of those. Yep. Those are obvious, eh? I reckon we'll absolutely see those standard editions coming yes. out. And then, well, okay. So we're going to cross into the bulk of what we were talking about here. Uh, hmm. The latest Pinball Bites edition came out which was a complete surprise to me that it was on the way. Yeah. And it turns out it kind of wasn't announced previously. They literally had finished it, putting the episode together the night before. <laughs> so it was a, nah, let's get this out. It, you know, turns out that um, Zen's also busy during the holidays. Um, yeah. Wow. So anyway, they busy made a, is an understatement. <laughs> yeah. They made a whole slew of table announcements. Uh, but the first one that we're going to touch upon uh, comes into what's coming from <laughs> now at games also, which is Star Trek pinball. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which I'm sure a lot of people uh, are going to want to get their hands on this. Um, but, you don't like Adam's family? Star Trek, there's a lot of Trekkie. Okay, that's so, Star state Trek it. Discovery, right? Okay, that's... so on the... No, this is Star Trek Kelvin. So Kel that's that's Kelvin? Chris Pine right there in the middle. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. It's like, that, that's licensed properties all over this. Yes, and what like, threw everybody is, because that not that what's on the side of the Stern pinball cabinet? Yeah, it looks, I'm going... Right. So a lot of people lost uh, their minds because, now, it's not currently in here. <laughs> um, can I make this bigger? Yes, I can make this bigger. Um... The initial play field that they had on here was Stern's Star Trek. Really? Before, because this apparently popped up on the at game site the day before Pinball Bites uh, came out. Oh, okay. And so they had Stern Pinball, <laughs> Stern Star Trek on the play field. And then, of course, Stern Star, uh, Star Trek also has that image on the side of the machine and everybody went, yeah wait a second we're getting now of course all these images at the in the fine print on the bottom says images are strictly placeholders and might change come you know time um but of course everybody yeah. was like no it, that's that's what it is and i was like i i hopped on some messages and i was like i guarantee that the artwork's going to change as soon as um the announcement the announcement comes out sure enough <laughs> I just looked and that's now an image from Zen uh, of their version of Star Trek. Um, yeah. Now, just to see what the other side of that cabinet looks like. Look at that. Completely different artwork on the other side. <laughs> that's really odd. It is really odd. Like, do you want uh, the left side to display or the right side to display? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. I mean... I definitely like the right side way, way better. I do too. Like just, just slap that on both sides for me, please. And yeah. that would look amazing. The, um, they did not need to go different graphics in the list, unless that is maybe that's like an alternative art package you could choose. Maybe they're like you could get this one, or you can get the black one, and they're showing both variants maybe because it is. I maybe I don't know, and I'm I would love to know. Uh, how much of this is Zen doing the design 
and how much of it is at games doing the design uh, with graphics. Um, mm. I, I, I honestly don't know, but I know that I would prefer, I, I, I like cabinet art to be simple. Yeah. I don't like, like it to be busy. Stenciled art is preferable. Stenciled right? art is great. Yeah. Um, so having just a full blown photo on there, I'm not really that just big of a fan of Photoshop it. stuff. No, um, not, not really hugely into it. Yeah. So, you know, the, even the Adams family one, which let me bring that up real quick and just do get the image up here. Um, it's, there's a lot going on there with the green. Yeah, there's a lot of green. And I prefer the original uh, cab, which was black cab with just Adam's family written on it. Yep. Um, now, I don't mind the back box having graphics on it. Um, like you mean the um, the arises yes. of the back box? Yes. That, yeah, I mean, that's good. That I'm fine with because it's a much smaller visual, smaller footprint. But the, mm. your entire machine, I, that's where I prefer uh, symbol. You know, it's interesting, right? Like, if we think about cabinets in the arcade and cabinets for home use, uh, what you're going to see a lot of the time is in the arcades, they're all side by side and you can't see the artwork really anyhow. <laughs> yeah. But for those ones that are at home, I think the reason why they do what they do is because they know it's going to be a centerpiece of mm -hmm. a room. So they don't really want to go simple. I think they actually want to go more graphically rich because it's going to be like a talking point. Yeah. But... I do agree. Less is more. Yeah. Um, it, it can be a talking point. It doesn't need to scream at you. Yeah. Right. Um, all that being said, my initial thought when the cabinets were announced with a Zen, I figured it was all going to be Williams cabinets. So the peanuts one really, threw yeah, me, me too. That really threw me a surprise and then made me go, Oh, if you guys do an aliens cabinet, I'm going to be really jonesing for that. <laughs> Yeah, I could see you just. I, you're gonna Honestly, have to... I wouldn't buy a new cabinet, but I would maybe pay for a wrap that was pre done. I don't know. That would be. Mm, um, that would be pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because I, my thought was that, oh, hey, now you can do Whirlwind and actually put a, a blower fan up top. Um, which that I. That would be. Still really hope that they really do cool. do that. If if they make a whirlwind table, that would be that's they the, just that's do the a entire topper, point of making a whirlwind table. Put a topper, put one of those PC fans in it. Mm -hmm. Like the, I you know, even sell it as a mod. Like sell it as an extra, you gotta pay for extra for. Yeah. People would absolutely buy extra yeah. for that. Yeah. Um one hundred percent. So it's interesting though, with all these cabinets, uh looking at these and, and what um what Ad Games is doing with it, uh, seeing what the price points are going to be. And then going back to the podcast, I listened to our interview with Brad Baker, who runs a VP Cabs. Um, and I hadn't been to their website in a while. So mm. if you go to virtualpinball.com, that's their website. They only sell two machines now, Jared. They're Me still too. saying, still selling the, um, the Vertigo. The Vertigo. Mm -hmm. It's trucked out. <laughs> oh, yeah? And then they're selling their main machine. And the right. bells and whistles and what they've got going on these things is like, holy smokes, why would you buy another company's machine? Really? So what are we talking about here? Uh, so now they've got it so you can do Anaglyph 3D. Um, they've got it. What? So that, yes. They've got it so that you can plug in your VR headset and use the cab as a controller. Um, right, eh? They've got eight solenoids, shaker motor. Uh, they do have a fan. It's weird. It comes up from underneath the coin door um, and blows up at you for yeah. God knows what reason. But anyway, it's there. Um, right. It's a 46 inch monitor now. They no longer, the, the monitors that they buy now um, are frameless. So they're not having to take off the frame. Um, they can just fit it directly in. Um, and the, the, But the price is still the same price as when we interviewed him all those years ago. So it's still just north of eight grand. 
Um, okay. So it That's... seems to me that there is a lot of... Oh, they've got their own plunger tech now. They've got an actual plumb bob that works for tilt. Um, wow. Okay. I, I really, you got to go to the website, but the vertigo machine, that thing <laughs> is crazy now. It's got cup holders on it. It's um, really, yeah, it, 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 it's come a long way from the first time that, that it was out there. Um, cause that interview was like at least five or six years ago now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. It was a while ago. Um, yeah, I can, right. uh, I wonder if I could bring it up real quick. Let's see, just to give you an idea. I could, I could just put something in the, in the notes if you like for that. Why is it telling um, me that it's forbidden? Forbidden. <laughs> four or four for, oh, I four got that the other day. Hmm. I got that when I was trying to help out someone on Pinball Effects with the Champion Edition cabinets. Oh. That yeah, like someone was trying to work out whether they could upgrade to Windows Ten. And... I was literally just looking at the website though, so hmm. Maybe sometimes it has to DNS do. With, sometimes it has to do with my ad blocker too, <laughs> or my oh. me, not my ad blocker, but my VPN. Right. Um, and I'm not going to turn that off right. mid session because that'll cause the, chaos. there be chaos <laughs> that that will break everything. Yeah, uh, I'll put a link. I'll yeah, put, a link put a link in the link, show notes. But yeah, uh, check it out. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so let's dive back into then pinball bites, um, and we'll start with the Star yeah. Trek stuff. So, mm. complete utter shock and surprise, and yet it's something that we've been asking for for years, or hoping for, I should say, for years, is that yeah, if you paid for the license. Let's have some originals also from that same license. We, this is what we hoped they would do with like Indiana Jones. Um, so yeah. Star Trek. Yeah. Zen, they've got three new tables coming out. They've got the Kelvin version of Star Trek. So that's, you know, the movies that uh, with Chris Pine um, that we know of. So that alternate timeline. They've got yeah. Discovery, which is based off of the TV show. And they've got the Deep recent Space Nine, TV show. That's also based off the TV show. Yeah. So like how would they have narrowed down the material to include in the shows from like ds9 that's so many episodes to comb through <laughs> how how would they have made that call like that is i'm more impressed by unfathomable you realize how long they've had to been working on this oh it has to be like at when... least nine months we already we already established that it takes them yeah. from start of licensing and everything to finish at least nine months. Yeah. Per table. <laughs> so when did Star Trek release? I can't recall. Uh, but didn't it, it just release year. a couple, like less than six months ago? Uh, maybe, definitely less three months than six. Ago, if that. Yeah. Comment in the comments if you can help us remember. Yeah. But yeah, it's not, it was definitely late, like last quarter. Well, yeah. no the last quarter like you know quarter i think it's been within the past three months three. yeah um yeah august you're probably right august around there yeah um but anyway so clearly, for three tables what's that, that so it's three different tables coming out so that's three different designers probably yeah it is who've been tasked with be. this yeah that's yeah that's um, quite incredible and getting all those assets uh it's not, you know who knows what voice assets they got, but getting all those assets, all those licenses. So clearly when they were talking to Paramount, uh, or I should say CBS, CBS handles a lot of the... Uh, That's the CBS now, yeah, yeah. with Star Trek. Um, yeah. Clearly they were like, can we do things? And they were like, yes, please. And they went, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just imagine the, the glint in Zen's eye when they when CBS came back to and said, oh yeah, no, that'd be good if you could do some other properties. Right? They went... <laughs> so it turns out that on the at games star trek uh cabinet you're getting these three star trek games but then it was announced like the day after that oh and next generation will be included too okay <laughs> <laughs> i could see that cabinet selling pretty well i would imagine uh yeah interestingly they have not posted on the website that next generation is included um, I think that came through from some internal sources or something. Um, mm. Again, this is, I watched a few videos of uh, the YouTubers that are in tight with at games and actually have communications with them. And they were the ones that were uh, mentioning this. So um, 
depending on how much you trust them and what information that comes out of them. But still, I was like, that's a pretty, that's a pretty solid table right there. Um, but, pretty solid I mean, machine. you think about it, like if you look at the value prop, right, you've got the Snoopy table, which is one table. Well, potentially. no, well, potentially. We'll get, we'll get into why I say potentially. All right, go back mm, to what you're saying. Okay. So, you know, you look at it and go, well, you know, what would I rather have? A themed, a themed cabinet with maybe one property on it or w one with like four included natively running tables. That are mm. of the same theme, you mean? Same theme, yeah. yeah. So it's like, well, that's interesting. And those, those three will be sold as a pack as well for Pimble FX customers, from what I understand as well, the three Star Trek tables. Yeah. Um, they'll be like a, a pack deal. Yeah. So you can probably expect them to be nine ninety nine US, I would imagine, as a going rate for three pack. Mm, honestly, I bet it's gonna be fifteen. You reckon it's gonna be a I premium think it's pack? Be 15. There is licensing involved. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm thinking licensing. basically call it five bucks a table, which would still be a bargain because normally mm. a licensed table they'd be charging ten. Um Oh true. Yeah, so actually. I'm mm. I think fifteen at the low, twenty at the high, I don't think they'll go twenty. I mean, because we are dealing with actor like likenesses here mm. too, and potentially voices. Or Music. definitely good sound alikes. Yeah. Well, hopefully, like there, there's not the, the main theme in there. Theme in there somewhere. <laughs> that there better be, like, um, yeah, I think they'd be mad not to. If they if they got actor licenses, that's like a, like CBS is probably gone. Here you go. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know. Anyway, okay, so there's there's your Trek news. Uh, since you just mentioned it, Snoopy. Well, it turns out that we're getting a Charlie Brown Christmas table. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That, that's new as well. Complete hey. surprise and like, whoa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, hey, look and at that. And it follows the it follows the actual movie. Oh, uh, the TV show. It, it, oh, it's a TV show, right? Yeah, because I know there's actually there was some sort of TV thing. Out Jared, for are it. you telling me you did not grow up with a Charlie Brown Christmas airing on the TV every holiday season? When you I childhood? don't recall i think it might be a u.s thing it's a u.s thing for sure it was yeah we're talking it's a it's a so we would get you knew okay you knew things were getting real because all of a sudden there'd be a night special that would be it's the great pumpkin charlie brown oh so we would get that special and then the halloween comes, special and then yeah. yes halloween special and then come december we got a charlie brown christmas um and this is where you get the Linus Christmas tree, or the, excuse me, the Charlie Brown Christmas tree, which is the very limp, barely any branches, one ornament pulls the whole thing over. Right. Christmas tree, right? That's from okay. That's from this special. Um, but then usually paired on the same night as they would air that, they would also air the Rankin Bass uh, stop motion animation Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer um, special. Wow. I don't know if you are familiar with those either. Rankin Bass, that name does ring a bell, but I don't Late think Late 60s stop motion animation. Wow. Um, yeah. Rankin Bass rings a bell, but I don't think that aired very much down here in Australia at it all. It was annual holiday tradition. Everybody pull up. It's finally coming on the air, and we'd all sit down and watch it that night. That was like it's, appointment television. <laughs> it is as traditional as Die Hard at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Um, don't forget, yep. Lethal Weapon's a Christmas movie, too. Um, it absolutely is. Yes. Yep. Uh, Both are equally watchable over Christmas. Yeah. So, there you go. So, Charlie Brown Christmas, I would be gobsmacked if that doesn't find its way onto the penis cabinet also. If they're going to throw Star Trek Next Generation on to the Star Trek one, I would think for they sure. would throw this one on, too. Absolutely. Um, You're right. That'll be a twofer, for sure. And it does make me think... So does that mean we're going to get a great pumpkin <laughs> table next Halloween, maybe? Mm, please? That'd be cool. I think they'd be mad not to right? if they'd been talking to the licensors already for that. Like, yes. it's, got to be a, it's got to be a three for sure. Okay. Now, because you haven't already decided to fork over some money to Zen, they want all of your money. So also, okay, mm. everything I'm saying right now releases December 7th. Yep. So also on December seventh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> um, it's a lot. The uh, we have the card game uh, pack is what I'm going to call it. So Gloomhaven, Exploding Kittens, and Terraforming Mars. Those are all releasing 
on the uh, on the seventh. Uh, and when I say releasing, uh, everybody but the Switch is getting these. <laughs> Switch is getting everything late December. Mm. They didn't have it because didn't have probably game. release windows and Nintendo being difficult. And just or they're up or they're optimizing. Optimizing, it. yeah. No, <laughs> I'd dude, say, yeah. That's, that's what I would have to say with that. Um, but wait, you say I want more pinball on that date? Okay, they also <laughs> are doing remastered versions of Epic Quest and Excalibur. They're calling this the charity pack because your purchase of these, depending on where you are in the world, um, your purchase uh, will see the monies going towards a charity. Uh, here in the United States, it's a, I, I don't have the names of the charity in front of me, but it's basically a charity that puts pinball Project machines. Pinball. It's what? It's Project Pinball. Project Pinball. Puts pinball machines yeah. into children's hospitals. Um, you know, yeah, really, really great charity. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, for Europe, it's going to uh, the Budapest Pinball Museum. Uh, yeah. in, fa in fact, for APAC as well, it's also going to the Budapest Pinball Museum. Okay. Um, and that's um, going to go towards so yeah. charities that Budapest Pinball Museum sponsors. Yeah, so understand. shut up and take my money. That's yeah. an easy That's an easy purchase, that one. Um, just for Epic Quest. Excalibur is kind of a, eh, well, sure, whatever table. But Epic Quest is the a thing really about Esca table. Yeah, it is. And Excalibur, while it may not sound exciting, I'm really interested to see what that's going to look like with Unreal 4. Hmm attached to it it's going to look beautiful it already did look really pretty yeah. as a table but boy that lighting i reckon it's going to be pretty pretty good so i know what you're thinking but that's only nine tables to fill up my time <laughs> on December only nine 7th. tables that's only nine tables can't we Man. have more sure but, but wait, earlier, there's more. Because <laughs> on November 30th, Pinball M drops. Yeah. And they went ahead and announced the final table in uh, the launch of that, which is The Thing, which looks yeah. freaking awesome. Um, the yeah. fact that they put a spider head uh, roaming across the table, I'm like, perfect. Um, mm -hmm. And and I don't, I doubt that they paid for the uh, voice likenesses. But whoever they got sounded like Kurt Russell sounded a lot like Kurt Russell. So I'm yeah. happy about that. Um, yep, yep, yep. Now, those all come out November 30th, or the, you know, yeah, for the game. It sounds like you can buy the tables individually, but they're also doing what they call the death save pack that'll discount all the tables in one go. Um, they didn't mention a price for that. Uh, we'll find out, obviously, very soon, because as of this recording, yep. that's five days away. <laughs> um, yeah. So, impending release yeah, yeah impending release um and akosh is all about the thing pinball uh, apparently that's now his he he ranked it as whitewater bob's burger and the thing pinball being his favorite machines that zen has done big calls yeah so um can't wait to play this one yeah and Lena, i think it's already i think you could always get a you can already get a demo of the thing i, haven't even I think looked. i should look and see and i haven't either because yeah. it's well because because i've been slammed um what yeah um so there you should have actually it. try it out 14 tables in the span of one week yeah so so you can safely tuck yourself away, away from the family over Christmas <laughs> and just play pinball for the entire time, which is probably what I'm going to be doing because I'm having three weeks off over Christmas. Ah. Um, two of those weeks will be just me. Oh, and, and then one, one of those week weeks will be just the kidlets. Not so kidlet anymore, right. like, you know, actual tweens and teens now. Mm -hmm. Because that's because that happened. Um, <laughs> Mine's now an adult, so yeah, yeah. Um, it, time marches on, right? Yeah, but yes, it's gonna be. It's gonna be. I might even. You'll notice that I have not been streaming at all because I just, I just, I just haven't been. Um, haven't felt the motivation to do it. But this will get me back in front of the camera again, doing a bit of streaming. And there's so, seriously something for everybody here, you know, everything from, yeah, the, that's... from those horror tables all the way to Charlie Brown, which I guess that's part of what makes sense of having Pinball M separated from, <laughs> yeah. from the rest of this. Um, 
But totally. Like when you see the stuff that's coming out in Pimble M and the stuff that they're releasing, like almost in parallel in the FX platform, there's there's no way those two can coexist yeah. at all. Yeah. So yeah, Pimble M really unlocks a lot of possibilities for the studio. Now, let's talk about something that Pinball, one of the features that's in Pinball M that I saw that I my head exploded. Um, mm. One of the challenge modes is called the Shiver Challenge, mm. which is lights off except for GI lighting on the machine. I'm like, oh, hell yeah. Can we please put that on the Williams machines? But it's dark, man. Like, if you're playing that in it's with dark room, HDR... It's, it's literally turning off all the lights... And only mm. letting the illumination from the actual lights that are on the table, which, as we've said before, Zen doesn't put a lot of GI lighting on their table, um, no. so it's going to. But be I think dark the ball glows as well. What's that? I think the ball. I think they put a glow. Yes, ball they did put a glow ball as well. Um, but if you put that mode of lighting into a Williams machine, like mm, Attack from Mars, glows, that would look yeah unbelievable. I would be playing. <laughs> Attack from Mars in that mode and Circus Voltaire in that mode permanently. Oh, geez, those tables. Yeah. They, they would just look amazing. Yep. yep. Well, you know, Pimble M, that's what they're doing. They're doing all these tests in the wild. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, make sure you tell them that you like this and that you want to see it in the game because they are they are closely listening to the feedback, yeah. I can tell you. Um, so, yeah, be vocal about the things that you love in Pimble M because that will get it into the main game. I did ask in the Reddit chat after the show whether or not um, cabinet mode is going to be in Pinball M. They did say it is. Um, mm. I also that's asked if... pretty amazing. Yeah. I didn't think they would actually do cabinet mode for M, but yeah, that's great. I also asked if back glasses, specifically animated back glasses, are going to be making their way since they're you know partnering with App Games. <laughs> um, mm. uh, didn't get a response about that. That's something that okay. Zen really needs to get on, though, is you got to provide the back glass. Don't make people scour the internet so they have a proper back glass for any of these things. It should just be part of it, and it should be animated. Um, yep. So. Yep, absolutely. All right. Now, that's all the tables that they announced. As if that wasn't enough, they also are adding a whole bunch of quality of life features to pinball effects. <laughs> Yeah. So let's start with the first one. Control remapping. Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> this yep. should make all the cabinet owners much, much happier because obviously you'll be able to map to whatever buttons that you want that are on your cab. Mm -hmm. um, and not have to use something like Joy to Key or something like that to get it working. Right. Um, so that's fantastic. What I'm really hoping this also means is that we'll get that ability to do a second flipper. Oh, they they have to do it. And like, I posted that question. Lena said he'll ask the developers and uh, get back to us on that. Um, whether or not he gets back to us is a whole, whole other story. But again, that was in well, Reddit. I posted that on Reddit. So, um, but hey, look, at least they put did. it this way: it's the start mm -hmm. of that possibility, mm -hmm. right? That yep. the fact that we can remap now is going to make a, a massive quality of life difference to a lot of people. Like for people who actually have accessibility issues with the control scheme that's currently there. Yeah. Like that's really, really important. So yeah, good on them for actually getting around and actually doing that, you know. Next quality of life feature is quick play. And they said there's two features mm. to this. Uh, let's start with the second feature that they announced, which was um, challenge or single play, uh, quick start. I am guessing it's a randomizer. Is that what it sounded like to you, Jared? Yeah, I got that impression as well. Yeah, so you push quick play and it just pops up a table and you start playing. It's not you selecting anything. Um, so you don't have to think. I, say, I want to play this table. Give me a mode. Well, I don't even think it's play necessarily it. you play a table. I think it's literally play me something and then up pops. It, oh, so it's it, like the... They said it's from it's like roulette that you own. Yes. Oh, it's roulette. Mm -hmm. All right. That's that's actually great because I've got decision paralysis now in the game. <laughs> I, like, I, I cycle through the list and I go, I end up just going back to Williams because I just go, I, I don't yeah. even know what to play. Yeah. Like, um, so this is great. The first part that they said with this is that they call it continue and it will be continuation of your, and they said saved game. 
But mm. all I'm imagining, what it basically means is it's not going to go to the back to the menu screen every single time. It's game finishes. You want to start it back up again? Boom, right back into that table you're playing. Now, the big question I hope is... that's Williams. <laughs> I hope that's Williams. Are those Williams ROMs going to carry over specifically with Dr. Dude, uh, your progression on the Dudameter, um, with Adam's family and Thing Flip learning? Will it have learned uh, and you're not losing that learning every single time? Um, will Is there anything else out there that has a progressive mode? Oh, uh, Vault Mode on Safecracker. That's a massive one. Right? Um, yeah. And... There are a lot of System 11 games, which we know are going to be coming on the way, that require, that have that progressive mode, the progressive jackpots and stuff like that. So we've talked about that. I do have an observation, though. Hmm. And this is outside of the announcements, but it's more of a, it's more of what wasn't announced. And that is Williams. What's happening with Williams. We didn't hear a single, yeah, no Williams table announced. That was not a single property was announced in that big batch of updates. I thought for sure we'd be finishing off with a with a licensed table, like another big name license. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's all silent on the Williams front, and I don't know what's happening. Uh, I'm I'm not concerned yet, but I'm, I'm not concerned for the Williams license. noting it. No, I'm not. I'm concerned noting yet. it though. <laughs> I honestly think. You know what I reckon is going to happen, though? Mm. I think it's. Let's see if our thoughts align on this. Williams will be filler things. Like they've got a commitment list from a bunch of license holders where they need to fulfill the slots. And potentially, you know, we know that there has been staff reduction in the recent round of um, uh, redundancies and stuff through Embracer. So they might actually be going, well, we have commitments we need to hit here. We don't necessarily have commitments with Belly Williams that we need to pump out. So maybe we just have to focus on getting those licenses yeah, out I, I, for I, our I, commitment you're, roadmap. You're definitely on to something right there. Um, mm. They only have a limited time agreement for those licenses. I'm sure those license holders, uh, once the contract is signed, they want to see their product uh, being pumped out. And Williams, Without a yeah, doubt. There's no, there's no time frame for the Williams. Um, but what I was going to say was I think it has to do with the reduction in staff and that you yeah. know, they probably pulled people off the Williams tables to work on the Zen Originals. Um, and that, yeah. where, where do they just pull three developers from for those three Star Trek tables? They don't just come out of thin air, no. right? No. So, yeah, I reckon that's... And it would it would track because we haven't really seen a lot of Williams releases in the last nine months, and nine months is how long it would take them to do a, a license table property for those Star Trek tables. Yeah. So that does line up um, a bit. Yeah. So yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? It does. It does. Um, all right, moving on with the quality of life things. Uh, they said local leaderboards for PC will be back. I also didn't know they were missing. <laughs> it's like, okay, sure. I mean, I some people really care about this, and I think it actually comes down to those folks who are doing cabinet play. Well, and that's um, just, it's cabinet play, and it allows them to do offline play. Yes, that's yeah. true as well. So I think and, that's what that is. I mean, is it's about. great. It brings it back to parity with FX3, doesn't yeah. it? And, I mean, that's what they're looking at doing as far as feature parity goes. They're yeah. slowly getting there. Um, we also have system achievements, uh, are going to be back. Mm. They are going to be available for all of these December release tables. So they're not going back cataloging just yet, but for all new they will tables going forward. And then they said that they aim to expand that, which I can only attest would be for the back catalog that's already out on pinball effects. Yep. Yeah, I think they're going to just like, you know, quality of life patch those over time. Which again, there, there's your parody because they were already in existence for FX3. Mm. Um, which is <laughs> leads us into our final <laughs> uh, the quality of life thing which is physics and difficulty modes for the tables specifically your normal mode is going to be using the FX3 physics and then yeah. your challenge mode will be using your pinball effects physics um, this has a so lot of people asking 
what was the point of switching <laughs> to pinball effects? And I think it's that they got so much flack from a lot of people saying that they preferred the way FX3 played. Mm. Um, that this gives them, well, fine, we'll let you play with FX3 physics, but we're going to still say that these are, just like there was the pro physics, the pro physics are now the, the pinball effects physics. I'm going to be very curious, and I don't know the answer to this, what are the default physics going to be? I would think that they're going to default to FX because they will be mad if they didn't. Uh, it would be my call. Uh, why would you default to an older physics model by default? I agree. I th but I they think will that be that's doing what FX. Should be. Um, what would be interesting is if they let you uh, determine which tables get which physics. Because I think where yeah. the, where the pinball effects physics shine is on the Williams tables. Yeah, for sure. On the Zen Originals, those were designed for those physics, and I think maybe the the what we used to call the Williams physics, um, but now the pinball effects physics, um, those might be breaking or making some of those tables not function the way that they were uh, supposed to. So yeah, um, basically what they said was, uh, again, these are going to be available for the tables releasing in December, going forward. Um. So not necessarily what has already been released on Pinifex. Because um, I think, well, a lot of the Pinifex tables are only Pinifex available, right? Am I not mistaken about that? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, yes, actually. Yeah. Yeah. All the pinball effects ones are like all the ones that release in um, early access. Yeah, I mean, the only one Back that to the Future and the Jurassic Park, those were FX3 um, there. But like your... Mm. Uh, your for gearbox tables those were all pin effects yes correct so um oh and then finally the announcement was tables that are going to be on switch are all going to just be fx3 physics um, so i can only imagine that that's helping optimize the play on the switch probably probably less data points they need to implement mm -hmm. to do that physics which is probably good yeah because yeah. there's again a lot of people have been saying that uh fx3 ran just fine on the switch and pin effects is chugging on the switch so i think that's just engine related i don't think that's physics related um that's just unreal engine 4 being a bit of a mm -hmm. resource hog okay um physics i don't think are going to really play into that but i think perhaps playing on a a handheld console um, with the fact that this thing is running a Tegra processor, like on the Switch tablet, which I was using back in 2010, like seriously, mm. on Android, it's the same, pretty much same architecture. It's ancient. So, yeah, uh, it's a yeah, it's a bit of a, a hard ask to get it to run on tech that's 10 years past where it needs to be. Yeah. So, there it is, folks. <laughs> Wow, that's so that's much. A, that's a boatload <laughs> so of information. Much. Um, yeah. I am very curious to see where we go forward. How much of, again, what happens in Pinball M winds up coming into Pinball FX. Um, clearly, they're listening to uh, feedback from people. Uh, which is mm. why we're getting things like the FX3 physics back into this. Um, so it'll be interesting seeing where they go forward, uh, how much of this that uh, is reactionary versus was already on the boards and planned. But mm. uh, the bigger thing is, again, we're still seeing the impacts and uh, of what this staff reduction is and how that's going to affect um, the fact that all of a sudden we're getting 14 tables dumped on us. If you had have told me <laughs> this just a month ago, I'd been like, but didn't you just have staff reduced? So if it was that much of an issue, they would have been stringing these things along uh, to pad. Uh, that's true. What's happening, yeah. you know, next year. Yeah, that's right. That would have been like, you know, feathering the timeline a bit. Yeah. To, you know, just release these over time to give them a chance to re regroup again. 
But no, no, here's 14 things. <laughs> uh, enjoy. <laughs> wow. Um, you know, yeah. to everybody that was complaining that Pinball M didn't come out in time for Halloween, hey, I'd rather have, you know, a solid working game than one that needed patches going after. Somebody was even talking about how come we don't do this? How come they didn't do early access? I'm like, because they learned their lesson? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. none of you treated early access like it was early access and instead treated it like it was the alpha or the you know the the, the 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 green what do you call it when it's gold general availability version yeah i don't know yeah, yeah like the version of the, the game the locked was... version yeah, anyway um yeah. yeah so it's like yeah better that they hold on to it and make sure that it's working how it's designed then and clearly state that it's beta it's beta like yeah things will change you know but the thing is that early access beta, they are both the same thing. Yeah. Like, you know, but they just have different names. Uh, Interestingly, but, yeah. they also have up for free early access uh, their new uh, Galaxy Mini Golf. Mini Golf Galaxy, I played it. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Uh, it sounds like they're going to use the pinball model for this, which is, you know, that's your free game. And then they'll sell different worlds. After yeah, that, that's exactly the what early doing. access version of things is going to be uh, just this, work it all out. Um, but, in, yeah. in, you know, it's kind of fun. They have a, a, a creator mode so you can create your own courses. Some people, like I'm on that Discord, like the, honestly, I'll say from the outset, the game isn't for me. I don't really yeah, it's enjoy it. not for me. That's why I'm not really, yeah. But I, I still downloaded it and I gave it a go and it's polished already. Like I played some mini golf games before, um, and it's got a pretty high pedigree already. Um, so I can only imagine that this thing is going to become a very strong contender in this particular genre. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's and I'm not just saying that because it's a Zen product. It actually feels really good to play. Um, so yeah, if you haven't checked it out, just give it a go. Like the demo's free. Um, and you can get access to a fair bit of content in there already for free. Um, enough that you can definitely make a decision whether it's for you or not. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, you can give it a really good go. Three star everything because it's got like the, the one star, two star, oh, okay. three star achievement thing in the game. Really, really good mechanic. Um, so three star everything and see if it's for you. Uh, it won't cost you a cent. So. All right. Jared's semi seal of approval. <laughs> yeah, I oh, know. I I love the games. It's not for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, heaps of other people are really digging it, and they're already getting really good feedback on their Discord about it, about all the things that people would like to see in it. So, yeah, definitely high engagement of um the um from the people who are playing it over there. Okay. Mm. Um. Apparently, you all really enjoyed our uh, top ten video. <laughs> it's gotten a. Uh, fair amount of views uh, for us. The entire list of all the creators that made their top five um, got posted over on This Week in Pinball. There was, uh, I don't know, 30-some, 40 uh, different creators that made their own mm. videos in their own lists. Um, fortunately, we weren't the only ones that... Uh, <laughs> Played outside the rules where we just talked digital pinball. There was one that talked only about um, uh, handmade creation pinball, so retheming oh, of brews. what's that? Homebrews. Homebrews. That's it. Homebrews. Mm. And then another person, <laughs> they did their top five worst machines ever, which is hilarious. Um, yeah. Because truth be told, after I started reading the list and seeing the same titles over and over again, you just start glossing over what everybody has to say, which is for part sure of our reasoning for doing the digital. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but that was a fun so, thing so, to do. So interestingly, uh, I was trawling back through the several hundred unread emails that I have. Probably not that bad, but feels like it sometimes. And uh, this week in pinball have been taken over by Kineticist. So Kineticist is the um, the group of folk who run a couple of pinball podcasts and actually invited us to do it. Hmm. But Twip is now part of the Kineticist family. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, so that was something that just slid in, which is why I was going, oh, I, like, I got onboarded into this new mailing list thing through Twip. I went, what's going on here? <laughs> and and then I trolled back through and I went, oh, 
okay, they've they've partnered up with a they've they've joined the Kinetis family. Yeah. Um. So that makes sense. So yeah, that's just a bit of like, you know, the machinations of content creators for you. Yeah. Uh, which may or may not interest you. Probably not interest you. But so who knows? Maybe we'll have to come up with uh, some more lists and do short listicles. L- listicles. Little short episodes of that nature. Um, yeah. See what we. Can so come tell up us with. what you want. Tell us, tell us what you want to focus on in a digital pinball space. Yeah. Um, in the comments or um, to our different feedback forms, which are blah 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 at uh, gmail.com, or you can hit us up on the Twitters or X as it's known now. Um, and uh, I will yeah, never call it. it X. Sorry. You see that yep. little birdie at the bottom of our screen? That birdie stays. It's not going to become an yep. X. <laughs> yeah. It's staying there. <laughs> branding be damned uh so yeah come and have a chat and uh or leave comments in the youtube um after this episode and let us know what you want to see don't forget about the discord channel for you. oh yeah that's right come and uh, join us on discord uh, link uh, to join that is in the show notes uh and come along and have a chat it's uh low low volume uh and uh you come out and hang out with digital pinheads on there yeah it's good so there you go. Uh, in the works, we're planning on having an interview with uh, Anna, the uh, designer at Zen. Um, we're also trying to work to see if we can schedule something with Mel, like we typically do in December. So hopefully that will come together. And yep. um, if there's anybody else that you want us to interview or uh, think would be a good interview that we could actually get, you know, don't go sitting there saying you know uh, steve rich would be nice yeah 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 <laughs> you know. i'd love to talk to pat lawler would pat lawler want to talk to us hell no so no um, <laughs> um yeah go for the things that are actual gets or maybe you already have a connection and you can uh forward our information to them and see if they want to come talk to us we're more than happy to talk to people and considering our track record of some of the people that we've talked to you know that <laughs> hmm. yeah so not saying names but <clears throat> Um, <laughs> until then, uh, I, th- I have a strange feeling that we might have to do some kind of reaction to all these tables that, uh, pop up. Um, so expect an episode that, uh, delves into that next, but then it's December and, you know, all bets are off as to when another episode is, but we'll get, we'll get it, something it, in, in December. I guarantee that it, something. Yeah, there will be. There will be something coming in December. Just don't hold us to a date. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll we'll catch up again in December, but it'll be sometime yeah. <laughs> when things line up. Look, we, so we'll we see appreciate you then. your patience with our erratic schedule of releases. Um, and I say the appreciation because when I do look at the stats, our subscriber compared to viewer is most of our subscribers are our viewers. So we uh, that's that's good. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, that's, that's that's much better for us than just random people picking up our and then not subscribing. So we definitely appreciate uh, that shows us that you, our viewer, are loyal and uh, value what we have to say. And we appreciate any and all feedback that you guys have. So until sure. such time as uh, you see us again, uh, we'll, of course, be brewing up something along the line of, Jared? Stuff and things for you. Until then. Catch y'all later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.